Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Craft World Live on Craft Stash at Facebook page and on craftworld.com. We're really pleased to have you here on this Friday afternoon, and I am so excited. I've been giddy all week, actually, because we have got a brand new launch from the fantastic world of Sizzix, and it's especially designed by Pete Hughes. Now, I'm not on my own. I look like I'm on my own, but virtually I'm not. I have the wonderful Pete Hughes with me. I'll be bringing him in in just a moment as such. And we have two fantastic demonstrations from Pete as well. Please make sure you are tagging your friends in the comments. Please make sure you are sharing this, that little arrow, oh, certainly on Facebook, the little arrow at the bottom of the video that says share. Pop that onto your newsfeed. Make sure everyone else has a chance of winning because we are giving away three bundles. I did four there, didn't I? Three bundles. There's more chances to win as well. That's why I'm getting confused. Three bundles of Sizzix. These brand new products are coming to three of you at the end of the hour. We'll pick those names. We'll announce you by around two o'clock. In fact, I might see if uh, I can get Pete to announce that. I'll see if I can sneak that in. Um, certainly we'll do a drum roll with him. So please make sure you're tagging and sharing. Make sure everybody is aware that there are prizes to be won. But essentially we want to see this new collection and I have it all laid out in front of me, but do you know what? There's only one person who knows this better than anyone else in the world. And that's lovely Pete. So we'll bring him in straight away. So good afternoon, Pete. I'm very, very well, are you? It's certainly, well, no, it's not. It was first thing, it's now. It's, it certainly is, it's not. It's really not, it's raining. It's now apparently, although we're a bit sheltered in it, it's very, very much raining here, but oh, oh, there you it's go. perfect day for crafting. Exactly, that's right. So Every cloud has a silver lining. There we go, absolutely. Talking of clouds, we have some new clouds in the new collection. Can you tell us some more about everything? Well, it's, do you know what? It's called the Eclectic Collection because that's the way, you know, I don't know about you, but I go through the year with a sketchbook and an idea pops in my head and I jot it down. And then at the end of it, there's such a disparate, and I just boil it down and say, oh, I like that one, I like, but they're so different. Some of them work together stylistically, mm -hmm. some of them don't, but it doesn't really matter. The point is they all work with the lovely stamps which come with the collection. We've got some embossing powders in there which are gorgeous and we've used like an enameling technique with those and we've got some great cardstock as well. You have. I've actually got them all here. Is it easy if we have a look at my ones here? Well, I've got Let's them all laid out on my desk. What I'll do is I'll pop you down in the bottom of the corner so we can all still okay. see you. No picking your nose at the minute, Pete, because we can still see you're still there. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start. So this one, oh, this is absolutely beautiful. In fact, I'm just going to have to move things around a little bit so you can all see. Look at these bird cages. They are stunning. I love that you've got like these chains as well and the little birds here. That's good. I was taking, you know, the one I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I do know the one you're talking about. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's one of my favorites, actually. I've always wanted some good bird cages, but what I've wanted, I've, I've wanted different sizes and different scales, but those hanging elements, that gives you so much creative flexibility to use these with, with any mate, pretty much, but they're stunning by themselves as well. They are so, so pretty. Now, am I right in thinking you may have demonstrated with one of those for us? I think I may. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. We have got some beautiful demonstrations coming up from Pete very, very soon. Uh, the next one, Pete, we're looking at, I just need to say to everybody, actually, um, that these are all available on pre-order from craftstash.co.uk. Um, make sure you jump on that really quickly. Sizzix sells out extremely fast. Um, but we're looking at these coming out to you very, very soon. You've only really got days to wait. At the end of November, we'll be sending those out. Uh, Pete, we're now looking at the butterflies. They're like as if they've been made from wire, aren't they? That, well, yes, very much so, because uh, they, they, I think the images that you're looking at there, they were done using the embossing powders to get that kind of almost like a stained glass leading effect. And they, they were drawn, they were actually hand drawn with, with, a, with a brush loaded up with black ink. And it was during the first lockdown, right at the beginning, and I was sat in the kitchen sketching with my daughter. So wow. she was working alongside me and, we were, and I was asking, what do you think of this one? What do you think of that one? So pretty much what is there are the ones that she chose. So oh, there you wow. go. She, should be the Poppy Hughes set, that one, not the Pete Hughes. How old is she, Pete? She's 10. Oh, that's so sweet. That is adorable. Yeah. I bet she's so proud. Um, oh, yeah. It's To the Moon and Back next. I'm going to have a look at. I love this this one. It, you know, uh, if you look at, if you look at the bird cages, this one works perfectly with those. Sweet. And 
It to me, it kind of it's got that kind of Arabian Nights feel. That really sort of I, I see sort of purple skies and sunsets behind that. The moon. There's so many techniques that you can use. Most of the little elements you can use individually as well, but when you put them all together, absolutely stunning. I hope at least. Good. Oh, yeah, they absolutely are. I've seen the card example that you've done with that. I did have a sneak peek at your videos, so I've ah, already okay. seen that. Uh, the next one, oh, this is like the cherry blossom in the different vases and containers. That's right, yeah. It's what well, we called it Ikebana. Uh, Ikebana is the art of uh, Japanese flower arranging, which is glorious. I absolutely, and actually, the, if you look at the style and Japanese style, it informs a lot of the, the compositional style that I have with a lot of my makes. Uh, I love lots of white space yes. and the drama that that creates on, on a make. Um, and yeah, that, that one, it's so, it's so versatile because you can use all the branches, some of the branches, mm -hmm. you can use the branches independently. How about popping a couple of the little birds from the birdcage set on said branches, but it's got the flowers, it's got everything you need. I'm just flipping this over because actually I was looking at that and obviously to fit all the images on the front of the packaging there, um, we're yeah. getting quite small, but actually looking at the dyes, they're much larger, aren't they, inside? They are mu they're much larger, yeah, but, but they're a perfect size. They're perfect for your card making, they really are. Brilliant. Um, the next one, this has to be my favourite. Okay, so um, what are we calling this? I can't see the name of this one. It's the circles, the squares. Uh, I think it's mixed media motifs, that one. A bit of alliteration going on there. Um, yeah, it's it's. I think I think it's probably the one closest to my heart, that one, um, because of its versatility, because it's kind of like one of one of those things that brings everything together. It's kind of what I call a magic bullet die. It's kind of whatever, whatever die cuts you've got, whatever stamps you've got, they work seamlessly with those. I love those little marks coming off the edge of the page, in the center. Doesn't really matter. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually just going to open these ones up, Pete, just yes, because um, I want to show everybody that they're actually individual dies rather than one piece and yeah. it shows on the front. So you can see there, everyone, we have um, lots of different pieces. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dies, it looks like, in that packet. So there's a lot there. And of course, you can arrange them however you want to. It doesn't have to be arranged as they are on the packaging. Mm, yeah, the, lots of fun. And as you can see, uh, the, the image on the front of the packaging, that was done using the embossing powders to get that kind of leaded enameled effect as well. Ah, well, that brings me perfectly to the embossing ah. folder, uh, powders. Sorry, uh, We've got the four colours here. Um, so we have here the crystal clear glass. Yep. Um, we have uh, mirror platinum. My favourite. Is this your favourite one, is it? It is. So so is that a, a, a silvery gold, that one, or is it a gold? Or how, how would you describe well, it? Well, it's it's kind of like, it's a, it's a very on-trend sort of colour at the moment. It's neither silver nor gold. It's it's almost like a pewter, but it's a bit richer. And um, it's, because there's so much gold out there, there's so much silver, so much rose gold. I wanted to bring in something just slightly different, but, but clear embossing powder, I mean, that's so important because it's any colour. Yes. Whatever colour, whatever colour you use, you put that over the top, that's what you get. So once you got that, you got every colour in the rainbow. Perfect. And we have kettle copper and then we have the gun metal, which is like a black there, I presume that's like a Yeah, black yeah, very very deep grey. Yeah. So I absolutely love Sizzix powders. I've been using them for a while now and I just love the the, the fineness of them, the detail you can pick up with them is just amazing. So yeah. I they, they are coming home in my basket as well. And yeah. I've already spoken to you about the, these. You yeah, have, yeah. I am yeah. in love with them. I'm just going to move your picture along a little bit so we can really see these clearly. Uh, I've got the first stamp set here, um, and that's the, the one with the superstar, to the moon and back, wish upon a star. These are adorable. I love, they're so different. They're, well, that, that's what I was hoping for. You know how they came about, really? I used to, when, I was do, when I'm doing TV and stuff like that, sometimes I'll print a sentiment. And, you know, and, and I spend time doing all these techniques with lovely die cuts. And the comments I get is, where do you get your stamps? And I'm like, well, actually, I printed that on the computer. So I thought, why not just go ahead and create some stamps in that style that people seem to like so much? And I'm, I'm glad that you're loving them, too. Really and, and that's one of them there. And that works with the lovely with the moon dyes and so on and so forth. But all of the again, they were they were designed at the beginning of lockdown, the first lockdown. And it's all about positive, happy 
vibes going forward. And now it looks like we may have um, a light at the end of the tunnel. Then the positive vibes are back again. Yes. So it's a perfect time for these stamps. It really is. I just think there's so many occasions that you could use this for. I'm going to move on to another set. Uh, this is the one that says art has no rules, um, say yes to new adventures. Mm -hmm. um, you can do this. What else do we have here? Oh, creative minds are rarely tidy. That's so true. Oh, isn't that true? Everybody at home is nodding at that one. Yes, definitely. Um, follow your dreams. They know the way. And let your dreams be your wings. Again, uh, these are so versatile. Yeah, I, I, it, it doesn't, it, it goes with anything. It go, and that's why they were designed thus uh, stylistically, because, you know, I think whether, you, whether you're doing a vintage make, they're, they're more kind of contemporary makes, really. But, you know, whatever you do, I think it's going to fit in with any of that. And that's actually called, I think that's good vibes number one, that set. Lovely. Thank you. Because people will be looking for it on Craft Stash. So, like I say, you can pre-order all of these dies and stamps. We will go to Pete's demonstration in just a moment. Please don't forget you're able to pre-order these right now and they'll be going ever so quickly. Uh, Pete, we're just going to look at the last stamp set here. And this is the one with the beautiful in, so obviously the third one. The left, we've got yes. Look on the Bright Side, All Good Vibes. Um, what we've got, Think Happy Thoughts, You Are Loved, repeated there. Um, mm. Be Your Own Kind of Beautiful and You Are Limited Edition. Again. Yeah, again. Love good them. vibes absolutely yeah. love them it's so nice like you say at the moment where everybody is at the moment to hear happy thoughts like this and to be creating notelets and cards and things with these sentiments on i adore them i really do and i think people are sending more because because with the, we've had that sense of disconnect at the moment people are just sending nice cards just because yeah. we're, 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 we're making a lot more and we're just sending cards to friends to say hi i'm thinking of you you know Keep your chin up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, last stamp set, sorry. I nearly missed this one out because it's not the text. I said the last of the three, but we have one more. Um, this mm. is just me. This is me to a This is you? <laughs> I'm great. Glad to hear it. It's, it's a great set because I'm always trying to recreate. You, you know what it's like when you're trying to do splatters? It's so hard to control. It really is, or, or a smear of paint. But with that, yeah, and you know, if you're using distress oxides or things like that, you can spritz onto the ink and stamp it, get a great effect. There's so much you can do, but it's a way of controlling what is really a random technique. So that was the idea behind those. Fantastic, brilliant. I am going to bring you back in very quickly and pop me in the corner no because problem. we just need to say hello to a few people, Pete, because we have lots and lots of people watching. Um, so we're just going to say hello to a few people. We have regular watchers. So we have Benita, hello. We have uh, Stephanie, uh, Debbie Raymond, sorry, Redmond. We have Lynn Kirk, Joe Crafty, always watching because I recognise your name, Joe Crafty. Uh, Avril Vickery, um, there's lots of questions. What Pete and I are going to do is have a look at one of his fantastic demonstrations and we will go through these um, comments whilst you're watching that demonstration. We'll certainly answer some of these questions when we come back. Is that all right with you, Pete? That's fine by me. Lovely. We will have a look at this fantastic card. Um, it's a bit of a long one, isn't it? This was a bit of a long it, demonstration. It is, but I, it's worth it at the end. Stick Absolutely. around. Definitely. You will enjoy this, everybody. Let's have a look at this fantastic demonstration by Pete himself with his brand new collection. Let's have a look. Hello, this is the fun bit, the demos, but before I get into the demos, I just want to show you some of the collection. I'll show you half of it now, and then we'll look at the other half in a second. But first and foremost, what I've got here is bird cages. And you can see that we've got four different bird cages. We've got this lovely hanging element, all these little bits that come there, and of course the birds. Now, this is the die set in the packaging, and this is what you're getting. So these were cut out with the actual dies. Um, then let's take a look at some examples. Nice ink background there, simple black silhouettes. And you'll notice as well some of the stamped sentiments. There are some stamps, four sets of stamps in the collection, but again, we'll look at that in the second half. Then lovely little bird cages and this Ikebana set. Now that's coming up, I'll show you that in a second. Very, very simple. And then finally, I've combined some of the flowers from the Ikebana set with the bird cages. Nice, neutral, muted tones there. So we're going to be doing uh, a demo with these bird cages in a second. So let's put that there. Now, 
this one is this one is called moon and back and it's got that kind of mystical almost arabian nights vibe about it and um, there are the dies in the packaging and then this represents the different die cuts so all of these die cuts you will get in that set now let's take a look at some of the cards that i've made with this there we are to the moon and back and you'll see that has a lovely glaze that's using clear embossing powder and we do have embossing powders in the collection so we'll talk about those a little bit later as well then this one was done in neutral cardstock so same dies different vibe and finally and finally how about that one nice piece of home decor that incorporates most if not all of the dies in the set so that one is moon and back then third, we have Ikebana. Now that is, of course, the Japanese art of flower arranging. And with this set, you get all the flowers, you get the flower centers, you get these lovely planters and pots, and you also get all of your branches. So let's take a look exactly what you are getting. So all of these, all these planters, all of those flowers, lots and lots of fun. So let's have a look. At some and in the second half of the demonstrations we will be making something like this hopefully so there's one there then another one so here we've used a die cut circle to mask out before inking over the top then we use the same circle this time as a stencil so rather than masking we stencil put those on the top again you'll see all these lovely stamps coming in more about that later then next up how about cutting stencils and using them to ink through to get a shadow effect and then finally, what I've done, three little cards, all of them using the birds from the bird cages set and the branches from the Akibana set. Super simple, sometimes that's all you need, a lovely silhouette. So let's put those to one side for a second, shall we? And, and before I crack on, I'll hold this up. For Andy, and he's busy today, he's on the phone, he's chasing me around, he's very good, you know. But these are the stamps. So we've got four sets in total. We've got Good Vibes number one, Good Vibes number two, Smile, Sparkle, Shine, and finally Splats. That's kind of mixed media splatters. These allow you to get those random effects and to control those effects. We'll see some of these used later. The Good Vibes collection, obviously these were designed at the beginning of lockdown, lockdown number one. Um, and I saw I saw some great graffiti the other day, you know, Electric Avenue in I think it's in Brickerston, and somebody sprayed over the top, locked down to Electric Avenue. If you remember the song, you know what I mean. Andy remembers the song. He's smiling and nodding. There you go. Um, now these these were stamped, and then I applied clear embossing powder before inking over the top, so that acted as a resist. Those are the four sets. So it's Good Vibes One, Good Vibes Two, Smile, Sparkle, Shine and splats now we'll put that to one side how about a demo let's crack on and i'm going to show you the moon and back and we're also going to look at the bird cages so this one's a two for we're going to try and get two in in the time so the first thing i'm going to do now this is a background that i created using distressings uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to spritz that i'm using a spray bottle uh, there we are we're going to let the water soak into that we're going to let it do its thing because it's very, I like to let these air dry rather than use a heat gun on those, but it's subjective, each to their own. But I'll put that to one side and I'll just dry those off. Now, let's ink up the moon. Now, to do that, I've got two colors. I've got weathered wood and antique linen. These, of course, are distressings. So let me come in with my tool and I'm just gonna, split these up so this is a lovely this this is a lovely almost like a gray blue weathered wood it, it, it is what i'm doing kind of moons or if i'm doing shadows or something like that it's a very very usable color so i'm just working on this is i think about 300 gram smooth white card so we'll get that in there and then I'll take that off and I'm going to start with the antique linen. Now this tool incidentally, this uh, comes with our multi-purpose tool and it's it's a blending head. It's a more, I'm hoping, I don't know, 
I know you guys at Craft Session have got this, but it's been so popular, it may be out of stock at the moment, but check, check the website. Um, all of the dies, incidentally, they will be on the website for you to see. I'm sure Lou will tell you more about that as we go along. Um, so I'm blending, and I'm blending, and this, these two colours, antique linen and weathered wood, they do go beautifully together. They really do. So, last but not least, let's get up to the top here. And I'm applying direct to the cut. I know most of the time we say start on the outside and then come in, but I'm not going for a smooth effect. I'm looking for those imperfections. This is going to be the moon after all this, which is covering craters and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to spritz that one. Uh, again, I want some quite big blobs as well. And we're going to leave that. The water's going to do the business. It's going to start looking like craters, hopefully. That's what we hope for. Now, let's clean up my craft man. It's always good to clean as you go along. Sometimes I don't take my own advice, as anybody who works with me will be able to tell you. Now, we'll move those to one side, but let's see what's happened here. See, that's air dried. It's a very different kind of technique to actually drying it with a heat tool. Very different indeed. Another thing you can do, you can lift any bits of colour off with kitchen paper as well, or tissues, whatever it is you prefer to use. Now, that's my background, and I'm going to cut some stars from this lovely glitter card. And these are all from the Sizzix Opulent cardstock range, by the way. And I'm going to cut the hanging motif and all the rest of the bits from silver. And then finally, I'm going to cut the phrase to the moon and back from black. In fact, I pre-cut these, so I'll just show you the one. And I'll bring in my trusty Big Shot machine. I'm using the classic Big Shot. Well, do you know what? I'm, when this is 20 years old, I'm hoping they rename it the classic. Because it's such a wonderful machine. It's so ubiquitous. There are over 2 million of these machines in the hands of makers around the world. So I'd like to say you want to an exclusive club, but well, you're one of two million. I like to think it's exclusive. So there's our die cut phrase. We'll pop that out and we'll set it to one side uh, along with my machine, obviously. Now let's pretend that we've cut those and let's pretend that we've put them all together because when we do, that's what we get. So those hanging elements, they've been attached to this, as have the glitter stars. So that's ready to go, um, as is the, the lantern. So there we are, let's cut out of silver. So we'll put those to one side and we'll address ourselves to this moon. And I'm lifting off, you see the water's done its trick. I'm lifting some of that off with the kitchen paper before coming in with my heat tool. I tend to hold the card away from the surface when I'm doing this because it really does help with the card curling. And then I go both sides and it does start to flatten out. But if you have it on the surface, you'll find that it curls up. I don't know why that happens, but it does. So there you go, we've even that out. This is my Sizzix heat tool, by the way. This is a dual speed heat tool. So if you're drying delicate watercolors, lower speed. If you need to use embossing powders, or for example, if you're using shrink plastic, high speed. So you don't need two tools, just the one. What was that advert years ago, Andy? Well, take two bottles into the shower, that's the one. No, we don't do that, folks. Right, let's put that on here, like so. Onto the moon, and then I'll sandwich it between the two cutting plates before slipping into my big shot machine. There. And as it comes to the other end, we'll tap that to get the moon out. I wish we could do a take two, Andy. We'll tap that to get the moon out, or you could use, you could use your uh, die pick as well. And there we are. Isn't that great? What a wonderful effect. I, I do this technique rather a lot, actually, but it never gets tired. It really doesn't. So there's my moon, ready to go. I'm going to apply some PVA adhesive 
to my craft mat. I prefer to do it this way. I prefer to take the die cuts to the glue rather than the other way round. And I'm also going to pick up this with now let's see where's where's that guy so i want to make sure i get it in the right spot so let's get some glue in those places there we are all good all good now delicate part of the operation i would ask andy to do a drum roll but i know he's got his hands full so there we are we'll make sure that sticks down in place Thus, oh, wonderful, I like that. Now, take the rest of the glue now and apply it to our moon because this is going to sit on our background. Like so, and I just want it coming off the edge. Maybe, oh no, I'll bring it down a bit. There we are. But let's get those there. Wonderful. Now, a couple of things that we have missed thus far. One is our lovely lantern. Let's apply some glue to that. So that's hanging down there. And finally, the phrase. Remember we die cut this to the moon and back. Well, what I actually did was I used some embossing powder. Now this one is called Mirror Platinum. And we're going to look at the embossing powders in a second. We're going to use them. But what I did, I did three layers. So that looks like a metal finding, doesn't it? It looks really cool, all the dimension. And that's a kind of enameling technique, which I like to use with these embossing powders and with die cuts, as well as with stamping, obviously. We, we're all familiar with the results from stamping and using embossing powders. Well, this is using them, if you've never used them before, to get that enameling effect. And I will apply that to the base before taking my glue Like so. And there's the card front. Didn't take long at all, that did it, but the results are quite, quite spectacular. I, re I really like this one. So that's just one example of how you can use this dies. Of course, there are several. You can use the elements independently. You can use them together. You can use it in conjunction with the bird cages, even the Ikebana. They're all done in the same sort of style, and obviously by the same designer, which is me. So that's Moon and Back. Let's have a look at one more. Let's try and fit one more in, shall we? Now, I want to look at the bird cages, and here are the dies on some black card. It's just plain black card, I think, again, about 300 GSM for that. So I'm going to put them through the machine and cut them. Then I'm going to stick them together. Now, before I do that, well, in fact, I'm not going to do that. I've done it already. We've seen how we know how the machine works, so I'm not going to waste your time, guys. And uh, but let's let's think about how we can fit these onto the background because obviously, black on black, yeah, you can do techniques with that. Maybe add some gilding waxes, but I want to do something slightly different. So today, I'm going to be applying a stamp. This is the Art Has No Rules stamp, and I'm going to use the this is a Sizzix embossing ink pad. So I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of embossing ink on that before stamping onto the card about here. There. And then I'm going to take some, this is the clear embossing ink. This is one of four and I will show you these inks, uh, inks, powders. They're very fine embossing powders. So I'm going to apply that to the card thus and just tip that off there and that's the powder in place and then let's take my heat tool to set that now this is where we'd use the high heat to get it where we want it so I'll turn that up slightly again you can see the card curling so I'm going to turn that over bring it back around And that is all set. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, okay, Pete, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice enough, but it's not really ticking all the boxes. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take some pumice stone distress oxide. Now oxides are perfect if you're working on dark card because rather than just staying like uh, distress inks, they actually you can actually see the colour. So I'm going to apply this over the top, and where where I've applied that clear, you can see now it's starting to act as a resist. So rather than because when you've got clear embossing powder. In effect, you've got every colour of the rainbow because whatever colour you stamp on top of, the clear uh, shows the colour below. So, there we have it. That's that. And then I'm just going to take the, my kitchen paper and just rub off any bits of excess ink there. Now, let's take this ink. This time, I'm going to smear it onto my craft mat. It's there, it's very subtle, but it is there and it will become more apparent once we activate the oxide with some water. Uh, I'll take some Victorian velvet as well, so that's rusty hinge, Victorian velvet and pumice stone. No, spritz. So lightly, very lightly this time, not too much. I don't want that to pull because I'm going to pick this up just a little bit. See how that, see that on that corner? See what's happening there? That's where I want to go. Just get that in. And again, we'll rub off any excess. There. Ah, perfect. When I say perfect, it's completely random. Uh, you can, the more you do techniques like this, the more control you get over them. But even so, you never really know exactly how that's going to turn out. So I'll set that again to one side before turning my attention to the bird cages. And this is a technique which I dearly love using embossing powders. And I'll take my clear and I'll replace it with mirror platinum. Now, if you look around at the moment, all the Christmas baubles, there's a very vintage kind of thing going on. I know we're all sort of got one eye on Christmas at the moment. And we've always had traditional silver and gold, but platinum, and almost like a really old washed out kind of, almost like my wedding ring actually. Um, so, not the one, my wedding ring's platinum. I don't stretch to platinum, unfortunately. There you go. So I've applied the embossing ink pad to those bird cages. Now, I'm gonna take the mirror platinum and I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to heat it. Let's put it on the high speed and you'll notice how this enameling effect really sets in. I'm going to put it on the high heat, hope you can hear me over the top of it and that's looking great but what I love to do as I said with the moon and back, is I love to do multiple layers of this because when you do the multiple layers, you start to get the dimension. And when you get the dimension, it starts to look like almost like leading, uh, you know, in a stained glass window or something like that. So we'll let that cool just slightly. It's cool to touch. Then I can come back in and apply another layer of the embossing ink. Let's put this back onto here. Take my mirror platinum one more time. And there we have it. So that should be, that should give me just enough time. You can go with, this is two layers. You could go with three layers. It doesn't really matter. It's entirely up to you. Whatever effect you want to get, that's all that matters. So, but what I like about these die cuts as well, they're very fine very very fine so it really accentuates this effect tremendously well you'll notice I'm using the lower heat setting now because this gives me a much smoother finish it really does uh, yeah, it's kind of like magic do you like this Andy? it's good he's smiling he's smiling he's making that grin I know that grin I know that grin he's seen it all Andy as well so there you go, we'll put that to one side. Remember our background, 
art has no rules. I think we've gone a long way to proving that today. Then we'll just clean off some of that. Here's my background, ready to go. Again, I'll probably, probably dry this a little bit before we attach it to our base card. And also to flatten it out, we talked about the, uh, the distortion when we're using water on card. So the more we can flatten that out, the better. Now let's take my base card, apply some glue to the bag. You can use double-sided tape, you can use whatever floats your boat. If it's spray adhesive, then good for you. I love spray adhesive, but we're going, we're going with PVA glue today. I'm going to push that off to one side. Stick that in place now. Let's. So no, I'm going to hold that down. I'm going to hold that down. This is what we call multitasking. Are you impressed, Andy? He's impressed. He's nodding. He likes it. Bit of multitasking. There you go. So we'll hold that in place, and then I shall apply the die cuts to the glue rather than the other way around. There we are. And this stops us getting all bits of gloopy, grungy glue all over our lovely die cuts as well. Now we'll get that in place, make sure it's parallel. Pop that there. Oh, it's looking good, Andy. It's looking good. And there we have it. Art has no rules. That is our finished card, folks. Here is our other one. Didn't take long at all, did it? There you go. Two lovely sets. Some nice fun techniques. Uh, we'll be back in a second to show you some more. We'll look a bit more at the embossing powders. We'll talk about the stamps and other things beside. Yes, we will be back in just a minute. Not very long at all, actually. We still have Pete here. I'll just pop him in the corner. There you go. He's just hiding down in the bottom of the corner of my craft desk there. <laughs> He's still here. Um, so these items that I've been looking at, that Pete has been looking at, and of course, expertly demonstrating, are all available on pre-order from craftstash.co.uk. They are going to be sent out around the end of November. Make sure you jump in really, really quickly because... Um, is he making funny faces in the bottom? I can see his face, <laughs> but he's giggling way there. No, he's, he's, being, he's behaving himself. So please make sure you are commenting and you are tagging your friends because we are giving away three bundles of these products. They are brand new, exclusively designed by Pete there himself. It's like having a little pet in the corner. It's like a little <laughs> box in the corner here. Sorry, Pete, you're just sort of here. But we'll bring him back in in just a moment. <laughs> He's doing a little dog thing. Um, one thing I didn't show you when I ran through the first product, product, bleh, product here is the cardstock. We were just talking about these. Um, I'm going to bring them into a different camera view. I'm keeping Pete in the bottom there because Pete, could you just talk to us about these card stocks that I forgot to show earlier? Yeah, something that's been very successful for us is our card stock, Sizzix card stock. Uh, and you can buy sets of, there's a set of 20, which is all colors of the rainbow and some points in between. But you know how there's always that one color that you want that you haven't quite got? What I did was came up with a really eclectic range and that, that zesty kind of citrus green, that lovely deep green for, for your pine, that um, that rusty kind of orange as well and a deep yellow, that, that beautiful pink. You know, these were colors that, that I felt that I was missing in my life, in my craft stash, if you will. See what I did? I know, I couldn't help getting in. But the, two, the 216 gram, um, they're a great weight for die cutting or for making base cards. And they've got that linen texture one side, smooth on the other. So you're getting oh. the best of both worlds there. Perfect. So for stamping, you've got that smooth side there. That's exactly. Absolutely beautiful. I adore these. So everybody, we are, if you're just joining us, um, we are looking at Sizzix brand new collection designed by Pete Hughes himself there in my little box here. I'm going to keep using that. Um, we have got some beautiful dies. I'm just going to hold these up to the camera. So we have got gorgeous bird cages. We have got beautiful butterflies. We have got to the moon and back as well. These are stunning. If you've ever had Sizzix dies, you'll know the quality that you're getting with these. These are beautiful shapes. Pete, what did you say these ones were called? 
mixed media motifs. There we go. I, I knew there was lots of M's in there. We also yeah. have the gorgeous floral. So you've got like the uh, the Japanese plants, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Like cherry blossom there with the different vases. And then we've got some stamp sets. Now these stamp sets I am absolutely in love with. I've not seen anything like this on the market for a long, long time. I'm thinking about actually with these sort of sets, um, your art journaling as well, your mixed media, your canvases and things like that. Um, it doesn't have to be card making at all, does it? No. Nope. And then lastly, again, another absolute passion of mine at the moment is anything that splats and smudges and smears and paint swatches. I adore these as well. So I'm so glad that you've bought these out. Along with these stamps and these dies, Pete also has the embossing powders. So we have the gunmetal there, and that's like a beautiful black. You just saw in the last video the mirror platinum being used. That's that gorgeous silver gold colour. Again, it is for me, it's a bit like champagne colour. I like that. I like that terminology, actually. And we've got kettle, kettle copper as well. And then we have the clear, the crystal clear gloss too. So we do have another demonstration from Pete. There's lots going on over at Craft Stash. Like I say, you can pre-order these at the moment and grab yours. Please make sure you're commenting. Anyone who comments, even just say hi, say hi to me and say hi to Pete there as well. Um, we'll, we'll all wave back. You are automatically in with a chance of winning these products. Your name then goes into the hat. That is both on Craft World and on Craft Stash Facebook page as well. Now, shall we pop back to Pete? Do you have, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Do you That's have um, those boards that you were talking about? Are they to hand or? I do, yeah. Do you want to see, do you want to see the actual product, the physical size Ooh, of everything? Yes. Let's, let's start with To the Moon and Back. And um, is that coming through loud oh, and clear? Perfect. That's gorgeous. There you yes. go. So that, that's the actual physical size uh, and all the different die cuts that you get in the set. Then this is bird cages. Love so that, that one there you can see again all those little birds, the hanging elements, the four different cages. Now this one, this one, one you particularly like, and this one's in living colour. That is oh. the mixed media motifs. You like that one, don't you? I really do. Uh, that one actually, it, it's what I what I did. I inked up a sheet of A4 card, different inks, uh, distress inks, and then die cut them. But if you add that crystal clear over the top of those, wow, that oh. is something indeed. I now, imagine. let's have a look. Ikebana is our next one. That's the Japanese I, flower range. I couldn't remember the proper name for it. <laughs> That's quite all right. You are forgiven entirely. So there you go. There, there's the flowers. And, uh, do you know what? While I'm here, while I'm here with the Ikebana, let me hold up some of the samples because folks might not know the kind of things that you can do with that. Now, we've got a demo coming oh, up with that wow. shortly. Look at that. And then, how about that one? That's That shows now I've used a circle as um, a stencil. Uh, a mask rather so I've masked it out and I've inked over the top then that same circle with this one I've used as a stencil so one was a mask one was a stencil then talking about stencils I also die cut a stencil and can you see how I got the shadow in there oh wow how d I'm gonna say how did you do that that's not in one of your demonstrations is it no, sadly not. But yeah, <laughs> well, I die cut. I got tie cut from stencil film and make, created the shadow with that. Now, something you can do. Now, we, we looked at the bird cages as well. How about using those lovely branches with some of the little birds that we've got there? Again, I use a die cut circle to mask out there, and then finally, just nice and simple. It doesn't need to be fancy with loads of techniques sometimes. Sometimes the simpler the better. Yeah, so that's, these are gorgeous. They, these are all, I don't want, I'm not downgrading your cards at all, they're stunning, but they're achievable, aren't they, for anybody to be able very to- Very much so. Yeah, very much so, absolutely. Um, I've got, I've got, well, I've got a board, I wanna show you just very quickly the, um, the, different, the different colors of the embossing powder. Okay. We can get this in there. So using them both with stamping, as we traditionally would, but also getting that lovely enameling effect with the die cuts that we've done. Mm -hmm. And then for this one, I'm going to stand back a bit. These are the stamps oh, in all their glory. Um, yeah, so there's the splats. I think those up with different colors to make to create that. These, what I've actually done, I've embossed with the clear embossing powder. 
and then inked over the top. So they're, they're done as a resist there. So yes. that's another way of using them. Thank so there you go. Um, that's pretty much everything in the collection. Thank you so much. They are absolutely gorgeous. Now, we are running a competition. As okay. A contest. So we do this every week. So three winners will win a bundle. Um, so we have another, I know you know about this one, we have another giveaway that we'll announce at the end. Um, I know you're in on that one. Um, but I'm going to actually send you some winners' names towards the end of the next video, if you don't mind announcing those with me at the end of the video, if you could hang around to do that with us. I uh, sure can, no Thank problem. Thank you. So we will now be um, watching another second demonstration from Pete. This is slightly, slightly shorter, but it's equally as inspirational. So this is Pete with his brand new Sizzix collection, all designed by himself. Hello, I'm back. We've got another demo. That was a long one, that last one, wasn't it? I was hoping it'd be about 18 minutes, but never mind. It was fun. We had fun. Now, let's look at the rest of the collection before we get into the next demo. And we've got two more die sets, and then I want to talk about some embossing powders and some cardstock as well. First of all, if I can direct your attention here. Now, this one's called Flights of Fancy, and these were actually the artwork for this. They were sketched. I sat at the dining room table the first lockdown and I sketched these with black ink with a, with a big wide brush so you can see the inconsistency in the line, that sketchy thing. And I sat down, my daughter and I, we, we did these together. Um, well, it's my artwork, but, uh, but hers were spectacular as well. Maybe we'll see that in the next uh, round of die designs. But let's take a look at some of the things that you can do. Now, the stamps you'll notice as well come from a stamp collection which we've already seen and I use that lovely enameling effect with the embossing powders as I did with that. You can see the stamp we use as resist, some of the other stamps coming in, same again except this time a bit more colour. See all these lovely positive stamped sentiments as well. And finally this one, so we ink the card, we die cut it, use the clear embossing powder over the top and we've added some flowers from the Ikebana set. So let's put those to one side a second and we're going to talk about this collection. It's called Mixed Media Motifs. I designed this and I had to look then and see what it was called Andy, can you believe it? Anyway, so these are the bits and pieces that you get in the set. You can see them all there and even better you can see them here in actual size, uh, obviously all die cut from inked card. All of those were created by applying the distress inks and then die cutting them. Now let's have a look at some of the cards that we've made with them. That one, painfully simple, again using some of our stamps. You can see I've used the clear on the outside to glaze that. Then just using black card, multi-layering, multi getting kind of like a faux embossed technique and we've applied oxides and gilding wax to that just to get those, those things popping. I kind of like that monochromatic look. And from there we come to POW, look at that splash of colour. Again using that stamp as a resist before inking over the top. Now, now this combines clear and gunmetal powder and you can see the effect that that gives when you put the clear over the top, it kind of reacts with the gunmetal to get that really cool effect. Then clear and the mirror platinum powder over the top of that. Very, very simple, that one. Here's another one using that um, kind of faux emboss technique. Then we've got this one. Now this, interestingly enough, are the bits left over from that. No waste, folks, no waste. Absolutely not. Oh, and then, oh, there's another one. This is, um, there's another one from the Flights of Fancy collection. Again, a bit more colour there. So, we've got those two. Those two die sets, so that completes the five die sets in total. We've seen the first three already. We've seen the stamps. I want to draw your attention to the embossing powders because we do have four. And we've got the Mirror Platinum, which I adore. I love that colour. So you can use it for embossing with your stamping, which is the traditional way to use it, or you can use that enameling effect with the die cuts. Then we've got kettle copper, we've got gun metal, and finally crystal clear. And as I said earlier, when you've got clear embossing powder, you've got every color in the rainbow. So there are four different ones available. I hope you love them all, as I do. Then, next up, we, yes, there's more folks, there's more. We've got some cardstock. Now, this cardstock, 
it comes to you, it's 216 gram. There are 60 sheets in the pack and there are six of each color. Now it may look like a strange, very eclectic collection and indeed it is because what I did when I, when I picked these colors is I wanted to choose colors that fit in our color story range. If you've seen the Sizzix color story card of which there are 20 colors, four of each in the pack, we were missing some things. That lovely punchy green, that gorgeous, almost like a pine there, so for your festive floral mix. So these greens kind of complete that color palette. Then we've got that, we've got this lovely, lovely orange. There's a rusty color as well, which I haven't got here. Oh, there it is, that lovely rusty orange. Um, this one's called Cherry Brandy. Ooh, look at that. Now, that's the card so Very versatile, fits in with that range perfectly. Uh, but now we're gonna go back to our old friend Ikebana. Remember this one? These are the Ikebana dies which we looked at in the first demo. And I'm just going to pick up the board showing you again exactly what you are getting in the set. All those flowers, all those blanch blah, 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 blanches, branches, and all the planters. Now, we'll put those to one side. I've got everything ready. I've pre-cut a lot to help you guys out. So there are my branches ready to go. I've pre-stamped the base card. That's ready to go. And then I've also die cut the flowers and the flower centers. And you can see here, these are the two dies. We've cut them all. And what I've done is I've put them on this foam mat. Now this is, these come from the Sizzix paper sculpting tool kit. And what they're great for is you can actually use the different size of ball and stylus, depending on the size of the flower you're using. And you can get real dimension in flat die cuts. So with these small ones, these are the flower centers, all you need to do is take that, push it down into that mat. And when it pops up, you've got a perfectly cupped flower center and you can see the flowers that I've created all ready to go there. Now, I want to do the planters. Um, and I want to do it a kind of a, it's a technique we sort of touched on uh, in the last uh, demo, but I want to get these, I want to get some colors. I'm using Distress Oxides again. And we're coming in, into our mat, pressing the pads in to get the color to transfer. And I'm going to activate those like so, spread same with a little water. We've got Victorian velvet, we've got weathered wood and pumice stone. So let's go in there, we'll pick up, and we're looking for the most interesting areas. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm adding these just willy-nilly. Mm, that's looking good. Okay, then next up with black. Very slight, very different vibe with the black, obviously. Um, so some of them areas, that, some of them are quite flooded, some of them just look splattered. Ah, look at that, that's, that's really kicking off. That's great. Now, that's kind of what I want. I always say kind of, because I never quite know how it's gonna turn out. I never really know what I want, in truth. Now, let's put those two down there. I shall take my wonderful Sizzix Dual Speed Heat Tool, and we'll come in there, dry those off, And you can see that the color changes slightly as, as they dry, they become more muted somewhat. That's it, good to go. Because this, this, this is what we're gonna cut our, our actual planters from. Now, I'll put those to one side. And I'm gonna take from, this is the part of the video where you realize that you haven't brought your dice. So we're gonna to have to open an unopened one to take them out. There you go. If I had a pound for every time I've done this. So we'll take that. So you see they're attached with sellotape and boy, it doesn't wanna give up the ghost, this stuff. There you go. So you know it's gonna be secure. And we'll put those to one side. Those are the two vases or planters that I want to use. And I'm gonna find kind of the most interesting part of uh, the inked backgrounds. So I kind of like, I like where that's going on there. So I'm gonna get that like so before sandwiching 
between my two cutting mats and placing into my machine. So this is a lovely way of getting a random pattern onto your die cuts. I will run that through thus, and I'll just use uh, the pointy tool from my paper scar. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love that. Uh, I love that colour, the Victorian velvet. It really is something. And there we are. That's the other one. They're just gorgeous, aren't they? And hopefully very Japanese as well. Now, I've got some stencil film. This is this is stencil film. It's great for cutting masks and it's great for cutting stencils. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to, underneath the table, I'm going to apply some semi-permanent adhesive. I'm going to place that roughly about there because this is where I'm going to create my background. And I've got two colours. One of my favourite colour blends of all time. This is crushed olive and broken china. Now I'll we'll get that one there and I'll take my blending tool. So the broken china, this is a brand new ink pad and what I like to do is I like to take the ink to the ink pad to get to make sure I've got an even coating. Uh, I'll take some of it off there now. I want to get a really subtle blend. So you notice here I'm going starting on my stencil film. The stencil film is very smooth so it gives you a great flow when you're applying your inks. Really really smooth flow and I want to get that going all the way to the top so fading out as I go along stronger towards the bottom and fading out towards the top. And it's quite difficult when you first start doing this to get to get it so you don't leave any marks and it's about varying the pressure, varying the intensity of the colour that's actually on the ink pad as well. All of these factors come into play. Then we'll go in with a crushed olive. See what I mean about a wonderful blend these two colours make? Crushed olive and broken china folks. I really need to wean myself off this colour combination. I'm going to do something, I want to splatter again, but this time I'm going to do something slightly interesting. I'm going to apply the crushed olive to the crepe mat, spritz to activate, and then, rather than splattering with white out of my, I'm going to use this palette knife. And you see, I've got my thumb here, and I'm just splatting over the blue with this green, and a bit more there, but it's a great way of getting control over what would otherwise be a random technique. But you can see there how that crushed olive is actually, when the water hits the broken china, it's activating it, it's giving you a really interesting background effect. Now let's take that to one side and we will start to put these together. Um, take my craft mat and some ink. That's not ink, that's glue. Honestly. Right. Now, let's take a bit of glue on the back of that. And we'll put this one into the black vase, or rather put the black vase onto the branch. That's ready to go. Then we'll take the second of the two branches and put that into the ivory vase. Right. Now next up I want to start applying my flowers. So I'm going to take them from here. Remember we actually formed these with the uh, paper sculpting tools from earlier. So I'm just taking those little flowers to the glue there and applying them as necessary. You don't need to completely flood this. Um, you know, you can you can just put them wherever, wherever, whatever works for you. There's no right, there's no wrong. We're all individual. I'm sure that when you guys get your hands on these, you'll be doing some equally spectacular. Not that I'm saying my stuff spectacular. It's terribly egotistical. Isn't it? No, I'm, I mean what I mean is, is you guys will be doing some incredible stuff, all your own. Um, you can see. I mean, you can you, the way that you can vary the flowers, the colours, colours of the planters colours of the little blossoms as well, the flower centres, 
you know, you can, if you choose, you can apply little um, little gems into the center of these as well. There's so many things that you can be doing with a set like this. They are so, so versatile. But I like, because I like to work around with white space, it's one of those sets that gives me that, that balance that I crave. Now, remember our stencil film? Wow, how about that? Wow. Okay, now let's get these planters in place. First, first up, planters, they're not planters, they're flower pots. First up, we shall glue this one down. And I want that Mm, about there and then the second of the two I think I'll use a couple of 3d foam pads so I'll apply them to the back of the vase thus and then pop that in there over the top perfect perfect balance again that is subjective they're slightly off center um, you know, but it, it's entirely up to you. There are so, so many ways that you can be using all of these dyes, all of the stats, all of the embossing powders. They work great together. They work great individually. The choice is yours. Thank you very much for joining me. And thank you very much for showing us your demonstrations. They are absolutely fantastic. We do, of course, still have Pete joining us. And we have some winners to announce because... Whilst we've been watching those fantastic demonstrations with the brand new collection from Pete Hughes there, um, we have been taking in all of you who have been commenting both on the Craft Slash Facebook page and also on Craft World. Now, I just need to quickly mention, if your name doesn't get pulled out of the hat, I apologise, but don't despair because you are still able to pre-order any of these collective bits that we have just been showing you throughout the last hour. Um, Pete has done the most amazing demonstrations with them, so I'm sure you are extra inspired today. They're all available on pre-order and all going to come out to you by the, around the end of the month. So make sure you have a look at that on craftstuff.co.uk. So now, Pete, I am going to just do something here where we have us both in shot. Okay. Um, so we have some winners to announce, don't we? And you we have, do. You have a name. So should we go through the winners for Facebook first of all? The winners for the winners. I, I'm going to do this in voiceover guy style. Is that Ooh, okay? Okay, you go. I'm, I'm going to leave that pause like they do on on uh, reality TV. And the winners are from Facebook, June Woodhouse and Avril Vickery. Hey, well done both of you. So that's June and Avril. Congratulations. You can um, just message the Craft Stash Facebook page with your postal address, and we'll get those prizes sent out to you. And we have another winner. We do from Craft World. It is Color Play. Yay! Well done, Color Play. I apologise, we don't know your proper name. That is, of course, your handle on Craft World. You can message, uh, maybe message Natalie, editor. Actually, uh, Natalie's just joined us, the editor. Uh, or myself on Craft World. Absolutely. Again, send us your postal address, and we will get that out to you now. Pete, we have another surprise for everybody. Um, those you almost look surprised, and you do know about this one. <laughs> um, he really does know. Uh, yeah. Those beautiful cards that Pete has made for us today, he has autographed with his own bare hands there, um, and he has them with him. And I do. You do. Here they are. He's they signed are. those, and these are going to be available for one of your three of you to win. Okay, three wins for those. The way you can win those coming from Pete's fair hands is to go over on on Facebook to the Craft Stash chat group, okay? Just pop in Craft Stash chat into the search bar on, um, on Facebook and you will find the group. Join the group and um, we will pick three winners from there. The details will be over there uh, and Pete, you'll be sending those sign cards out to three winners for that competition as well. I need to say a huge, huge thank you, Pete, for joining me, not only for the fantastic demonstrations and the beautiful insight into these or just new products, but also for our conversation behind the scenes while everyone's watching the demonstrations, because you've been <laughs> a blast, of course. Um, I absolutely love having you here. I can't wait till we can get in the studio together. I'm sure it won't be too much longer now. Oh, I'm sure it won't. I'm looking forward to it myself. Thank absolutely. you so much. Thank you for taking time. I hope you have a lovely weekend. And I think and we you? can say goodbye to everybody together, which we usually can't do. Um, <laughs> So everybody and Pete, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Please join us on Craft World because we do have one more fantastic competition that covers everything. There's a huge bundle over there to win. 
always after every Friday live, pop over to craftworld.com. If you've not signed up before, it's completely free. You just need an email address, choose yourself a password, and you can see fantastic demonstrations, tutorials, inspiration from people like myself and Pete. There, there's lots of other artists, designers, and TV celebrities that you will recognize too. So pop over there to see the competition from Sizzix also. So yes, have a lovely weekend, everybody. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you all again soon. Take care, everybody. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Thank you. We're out. I think we're all Ricky. done. That's amazing. I'm so pleased.